Hello everyone, I'm Leroy Harris, Programming Librarian here at the New Ulm Public Library, and I'm very happy to welcome you back to our second annual Stories for the Season. This year we've done a great collaboration together with the State Street Theater, New Cat, and we're very excited to have the Brown County Historical Society joining us this year to provide us with our reading material. Uh, all of the uh, readings that you'll be hearing come from the Brown County Historical Archives. And so they'll include letters, personal remembrances, newspaper clippings, as well as some fun recipes. We hope you enjoy these stories for the season. Well, hello. I'm Judy Selner, and I am with State Street Theater, which has been around for quite a few years now. And as we are growing, happily growing, um, we are finding more ways uh, to use our acting abilities because some, when you're reading something, there is some acting in it because of how you are going to try to get the story across to you, the audience. And we thank you for tuning in with us. What I have here in my hand is called Local Christmas Traditions. And it was uh, for Thursday, December 20th, 1984. And I really am interested in traditions and to reminisce and to look back at all the wonderful times we've had with our families with those traditions. Uh, for example, in our house, because we are so many, we have Christmas in summer, in July, and Santa Claus has, actually he's gone fishing and he has gone boarding and he's done all sorts of things when we're there. We have such a good time. The Sellers are a large family, and so we, it's nice we can be outside in the space, and it was especially nice this past summer because of COVID. So we, we were outside, and it was a beautiful day, like 80, 40 degrees. It was absolutely wonderful. And so that's pretty much our tradition. And I think if you would sit down with your families and share your traditions with them, it would be a great, great thing for them to have under their belts to tell your children, your, your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren what you, what you did for Christmas. This is called Local Christmas Traditions and it was taken from the Comfrey Times and it was December 20th, 1984, number 51. So we, we thank them and we want to thank the library very much so uh, for, and the Historical Society for having all of this available to us. It's amazing what we can find when we go to the library and to the Brown County Historical Society. Is there any time of year that is more steeped in tradition than the Christmas season? It's difficult to imagine what the holidays would be like without all the familiar customs that make Christmas so special. Sometimes holiday rituals seem insignificant, but not to the families who practice them. The repetition provides a sense of continuity, of belonging, a way to express joy and extend love. Now, a little sidebar here. I grew up in a large house up on Washington Street here in New Ulm, and it's the, it, it was so much fun growing up there because it was so big. There were 26 rooms. I had three brothers, and every Christmas Eve, my parents would take us down to the New Ulm Theater and we would go to the movie. They would drop us off, and then they would go home. And then when the movie was over, they came down, back down of course, and picked us up and took us home. And lo and behold, Santa had come while we were at the theater. And you know, we must not have been very smart because it took us a few years before we figured it out. That's why we were at the theater, et cetera, et cetera. But we did figure it out eventually. I think we were about 10 or 12 when we figured it all out. But it was fun. We'd come, my, I don't know how my parents did it. They put that tree up, they had all the decorations on it, the gifts were all wrapped underneath the tree, and they did that in like two, two and a half hours. Amazing what we as parents will do for our children. So going back to these traditions, sometimes holiday rituals seem insignificant, but not to the families. This is a repeat, but not to the families 
who practice them. Their repetition provides a sense of continuity, a belonging, a way to express joy and extend love. Let's always, re always, always remember that. Traditions very often have an ethnic background, but they also may simply be fun things a family does with no particular beginnings at all. Ethnic traditions may be difficult to maintain if a family moves from their place of origin due to the inavailability of the elements needed to perpetuate certain customs. It also happens that when people from different cultural backgrounds intermarry, the traditions of one side take precedence over those of the other. Perhaps the tradition lies in the food that is prepared for the holiday season. Perhaps it's in the gift giving, holiday decorations, or the general beehive of activities associated with Christmas. Whatever the case may be, however the traditions are carried out, they become a vital part of the celebration. Although our cities are predominantly Scandinavian around here and German community whose Christmas rituals are already familiar to us, we also have a variety of other ethnic backgrounds among us who have some very interesting customs of their own to share with us. Christmas with a German flavor begins with the Advent calendar. Each day, beginning in early December, one of the 25 doors of the Advent calendar are opened to reveal either a picture or a piece of candy, thus marking the approach of Christmas. On December 6th, St. Nicholas Day is observed. Shoes are set out. Oh, I really remember sending my shoe out for that. Um, we found, we, we put boots out. We found the biggest shoe or boot that we had in our closets, and that's what we put out for St. Nick. That poor guy, we kept him busy. So on December 6th, St. Nicholas Day is observed. We all set out a shoe, which is there, then filled with candy and apples or fruit, depending upon where you are, where you live, by St. Nicholas. In the old country, it is the Christ child rather than Santa Claus who brings the tree and the gifts while the children are out of the room. When they return, the sight that greets their eyes is a lovely tree decorated by the Christ child and the gifts that he has brought set out beneath the tree. A native of the Philippines explains that Christmas was introduced to her, that country by the Spaniards. I find that really very interesting. The Christmas season there begins with loud Christmas music performed by groups of carolers, school bands, and the rural country folk who flock to the city during the holidays. Beggars and children usually try to solicit money for their musical performances. Government employees and garbage collectors become very mercenary at Christmas time and expect special favors and gifts for their services. In the event that they don't receive what they feel they deserve, chances are the services they perform will be discontinued. Firecrackers abound in the Philippines at Christmas, especially large homemade ones made of bamboo sticks, which have been drilled with holes and then filled with kerosene. Holiday decorations include large star-shaped lanterns made of tissue paper and bamboo, which are hung both inside and outside the homes. Christmas trees are found in groves along the beaches, native trees that nature has adorned with red tips. The trees are stripped of their leaves and are then wrapped with crepe paper and decorated with ornaments. Now that would really be neat to go and see. That, that would be fun. Families and groups of office workers draw names among themselves for secret pals and then exchange small gifts, notes, etc with them throughout the holiday season. Filipino Christmas sweets are generally made with rice or rice flour, coconut oil, and coconut milk, and may be spiced with ginger or anise. They carry names like, and I probably will pronounce these correctly, but uh, they carry names like Baiko, Suman, and Vibinjka, Nakan. This is pig with spiced insides and roasted over an open fire. It's a special Christmas treat. As is spiced chicken, meat wrapped 
it's actually I'm going to repeat that for you. Pig with spiced insides and roasted over an open fire. I always thought that was chestnuts. Uh, but that's a special treat and a spiked chicken. Meat wrapped in its own skin, which is accompanied with a noodle. And it's with a noodle, so it must be just one noodle. Carrot and meat stir fry. All are truly delicious. That would be, I've got to get that recipe, see if we can do something with that. The special holiday foods are all prepared on Christmas Eve. And after attending midnight mass, the Filipinos are 87% Catholic, the Philippine family returns home to enjoy the delicious food prepared earlier and then open their gifts. On Christmas Day, the homes are open to, birth to visitors who also receive gifts from those they are visiting. During Christmas, a special emphasis is placed on the importance of godparents to Philippine children, and they are regarded as family members whether or not they are actually related. Family elders are, who given, are, also, are also given extra special treatment by the children during the holiday season. In sharing some of the tradition of jolly Old England, Joyce L. recalls that when the stockings were hung by the chimney with care on Christmas Eve, she always used her mother's silk ones because they were bigger and held more. They were, there was always a brand new penny in the toe along with oranges, apples, nuts, and small toys. Sandra came down the chimney on Christmas Eve into a room decorated with construction paper, chains draped from the uppermost corners of the room to the center. Limited space necessitated the use of smaller Christmas trees. Homes in England are not a globe with the outdoor lights that are so prevalent here in the States. On Christmas Day, all the relatives gathered to enjoy an English feast of roast goose or turkey, and of course, plum pudding. A sixpence wrapped in wax paper is baked into the batter of the pudding, and whoever receives the serving that contained the sixpence was supposed to have good luck throughout the coming year. But somebody said that that never worked for her because she was never lucky enough to get the sixpence in the first place. <laughs> After they had enjoyed their Christmas dinner, the, or we could put that in first tense, I suppose. When after they enjoy their Christmas dinner, the afternoon is spent relaxing. When all the guests have left, uh, they return to their homes. The families then would go to one of the many large theaters in their homeland or hometown, and there they would enjoy pantomimes of children's nursery stories, such as Cinderella, Goldilocks, and the Three Bears, Hansel and Gretel, or Sleeping Beauty, in which the prince, if there was one, was always played by a girl. Children attending the performances would take them with them. Their, oh, they would take with them their brand new penny and their apples and oranges and go sit in the balcony where the smell of apples and oranges would permeate the air. People recall that children of their era were more excited about the activities and special treats of the holiday season than they were about how many or what type of presents they would receive. There are many people of my age, being a grandparent and a great-grandparent, wish that some of these Christmas activities that we enjoyed so much as children would be more readily available so that we could share them with all of our, our children and their children. Um, and we're going to try to do that. If we're all together, um, I think it's just neat if somebody sits down and reads the night before Christmas or a story about the birth of Jesus, a, a special story that one, or they could take turns reading it every Christmas. It would be just really cool, and something that they would remember all of their lives. There is a person named Axel Berenson, if, that's, if I'm saying that correctly, whose father came from Denmark, and he shared this story. Our Christmas began with church services at 5 p.m. on Christmas Eve, then home for our Christmas dinner. The first course served was rice. This was eaten with a dab of butter and sugar and cinnamon spread on it. It was served in a large bowl, enough to go around. 
An almond was placed in the rice. The person finding it in their portion received a small novelty gift. After the rice came goose stuffed with apples and prunes and potatoes and red and white cabbage. After the dishes were done, all non-workers and children went to the kitchen and the door was closed. The Christmas tree was moved to the center of the living room and all the gifts were placed around it at that time. When mother said, good night Santa Claus, we could return to the room. We would then gather around the piano and sing traditional Danish hymns. After the singing, we all joined hands and danced around the Christmas tree, singing a special song of Christmas. The gifts were then opened, followed by more eating. Doesn't that sound like us? Yeah, you bet. We still follow some of these traditions in our homes.